Hello everyone, welcome back to FT Church channel. In today's video, we want to discuss a valve system commonly used in world class competitions such as MotoGP and Formula 1. This engineering masterpiece is the main ingredient of their high power, high RPM engines. As we can see, the pneumatic spring is a technology that replaces the traditional valve spring, which still uses metal springs. This is to eliminate the problems of the traditional springs and to increase efficiency. For example, a stiff spring will increase the engine load at lower RPMs, so using a softer spring, we will create float at higher RPMs. So we must ask the question, what is a valve floating anyway? For those of you who don't know, valve floating is a condition where the spring doesn't close the valve quickly failing to follow the cam profile. This makes the valve open longer than it should, and because of this, it will significantly decrease the engine performance at high RPMs. There will be some fresh air-fuel mixture that doesn't get burned because the valve doesn't get closed in time, causing afterfire and or backfire. It does look cool because after fire often signs that the engine has a lot of power. But if we look at a different perspective, it's actually a system failure because so many fresh air fuel mixture that can be burned and make power is burned and make fireworks. For your information, the cause of after fire is not always because of valve floating. There are so many factors that can cause backfire, such as Back to topic. What's worse is that if the floating is severe, it can cause the valves to hit the pistons, destroying the internal components of the engine. That's why valves is the, always the main problem that limits the engine RPM. So, if you ask why daily drive vehicles doesn't have high RPMs as a sport vehicle, it's because of the valve system. But that doesn't mean that low RPMs engine are bad. Each vehicle has their own purposes. Back to the main topic of the pneumatic valve. As we said before, this technology is created mainly for competition purposes, where this system will eliminate the minuses of the traditional spring valve. This technology was first created by Renault and was known publicly at 1986 in a prestigious competition F1 on the Renault EF type engine. And after they innovated for three years, they successfully won the competition. Looking at the achievement of Renault, it's only a matter of time before other brands started using this technology, such as Aprilia that started using this tech on MotoGP in 2012, followed by other brands except for Ducati, which still loyal to the Smodramic system in their bike, the Smosedici GP. This pneumatic valve technology is also the inspiration of the camless valve technology, commonly known as free valve, although free valve is the name of sub-brand of Koenigsegg. That's the little history of the valve, now we go on to how it works and the construction of the system. The parts used on this system is actually the same with your regular DOHC system. There are valves camshaft, rocker arms, and a cylinder to contain the pressurized air called metal bellows, where this metal bellows has a lot of subparts. Then there's a metal bottle containing nitrogen that's used for the pneumatic system. It's connected to the metal bellows via metal pipes. Lastly, there's timing gear and timing chain. So as we can see, and as the name suggests, the only difference is there's a metal bellows to replace the spring. Other than that, all the parts are the same as the regular valve system. There may be a different material used on this system, but we don't know much about that. So if any of you are more well versed in this, let us know in the comment section. Okay, now we go on to how it works. Based on how it looks and the parts, I'm sure some of you have pieced together how it works. 
the Nitro Johnny sucked into the Metal Bellows, and that Metal Bellows is the pneumatic spring that replaces the regular steel spring to push the valve back to its original position or closed position. This is why nitrogen is important. Unlike oxygen, nitrogen's density is more stable under high temperatures. Oxygen is sensitive to temperature and the density will change drastically as the temperature rises. This is why nitrogen is used because a pressure of 10 bar is constantly needed for the system. That's the key that makes this system works better than steel spring. That's why engines that use this system can go up to 15,000 RPM without floating and backfire. 3,000 RPM higher than regular springs which means that above 13,000 RPM, regular springs will cause backfire. Next, the nitrogen reservoir is not only used to store nitrogen and sends it to the bellows, it also used to keep the Pascal law and stabilize the pressure to keep it around 10 bars. It's more or less will be like this. If there is no nitrogen reservoir, the pressure inside metal bellows will increase significantly and will broke the bellows and causing leakage. The reservoir is added so the compression is not too high when the bellows is compressed. This, of course, will increase the durability of the system, so we can be sure that the reservoir is a must. So now you know how the system works, we'll go on to the pros and cons of this system. Looking at its pros, nitrogen is undoubtedly more stable than steel springs and allow the engine to go to higher RPMs. This is because nitrogen is a lot lighter than steel and can respond to the cam profiles better than steel springs. But if we look closer, this system also have a lot of cons. They have way more components and is harder and longer to manufacture, increasing the production costs. But it's to be expected because this is an integrated system, unlike a single spring, and the maintenance cost is also higher to prevent it from leaking and also there's nitrogen. Its maintenance cost is high also because you have to regularly replace the parts and refill the nitrogen. That's why many engineers is skeptical that this system will be mass produced, especially for the low class vehicles. But if you're into competitive championship and good at making custom fabrication, this is a good project for those of you who are experts. That's all the information we can give you about Pneumatic Valve, which is the main rival of Desmodromic Valve, and also the forerunner of Revalve. If you have any questions and critics, please let us know in the comment section. I'm Bagja Mustafa, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.